agree it's not my best disguise, but I have to make do. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Bjorn. We're going to be looking at a character play style, something that of Sherlock Holmes. Um, in the end, we're going to be a Rogue 12 of Fighter 8. Um, there could be argument for instead of Fighter, you could go Monk, but um, I kind of like the uh, what I got here. This character is going to require both multi-classing and feats. It's also going to require some critical role contact, specifically the Gunslinger. So this is a character that you're going to need to talk with your DM and see if there's guns in your world. If not, maybe you could work something out that you're inventing the very first few guns here, which would be very fun to play out. As for our race, I decided that it would be best if we went with a human variant for Sherlock here. Um, reason for that is because the extra feat is going to help us out quite a lot. Uh, languages, it doesn't particularly matter what you pick, dependent on your campaign setting, I suppose. For your ASI, I would recommend increasing your dexterity and your intelligence. This is dependent on your roles and what system you're using, but we'll get to that later. For your skills, I would recommend that you go ahead and pick investigation. And as for our feat, we're going to go down here and we're going to pick out the Prodigy feat. Now with the Prodigy feat, we're going to go ahead and choose Sleight of Hand. For our toolkit, we're going to go ahead and choose the Disguise Kit. As for our language, again, it doesn't matter, dependent on what your campaign is. And for our chosen skill that we're going to bring up to an expertise, of course we're going to choose Investigation. So if we come over to our description and choose out our background here, we're going to go ahead and choose the Urban Bounty Hunter. I felt like this was best suited towards Sherlock's working within and without the law, so it was fitting. And also, it gives us our deception, and it will give us our persuasion. Now if we come on over to our ability scores, I prefer rolling. Um, if you choose Standard Array or Point Buy, it's, this is a pretty easy class that you can multi-class into. The only um, multi-class requirements for us is going to be a dexterity of 13. Now if you're rolling, if you happen to have gotten any 18s, I would recommend putting one into dexterity and one into intelligence. This is going to now bump us up to a 19 dexterity and a 19 intelligence. Uh, charisma will come into play later on, so we, uh, if you happen to have a, a 15, a 17, something along those lines, um, I would recommend putting one point into there. You're going to be bumping that up later on. Now if we come over here to class and we start picking out uh, what we're going to be playing, for our first level we're going to go ahead and invest into Rogue. As for our Rogue proficiencies, we're going to choose our Perception, we're going to choose Insight, we're going to choose Stealth, and we're going to choose Acrobatics. For our Expertise in Rogue, we are going to choose Insight, and we're also going to be choosing our Stealth. Now with our first level out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you bring the Rogue all the way up to level 11. Uh, for our roguish archetype, we are going to be choosing Inquisitive. Uh, I felt like this was best suited for uh, Sherlock Holmes. As for our first ASI, we're going to choose a feat, and we are going to immediately want to take Sharpshooter. Now, this character is going to be a bit of a gunslinger later on, so this I would recommend for your first weapon, since you're probably not going to be able to start out with one, um, that you pick a light crossbow. Now as for our 6th level expertise, I would recommend going with Perception and Sleight of Hand. Moving on to our 8th level Rogue ASI, uh, we are going to choose another feat, and the feat of our choice will be Observant. Uh, with the Observant, we'll be able to increase our intelligence by 1, this will bump up our intelligence in this case to 20, thanks to our racial. Now once we reach Rogue level of 10, we're going to choose one last feat and we are going to put it into Martial Adept. Now with the Martial Adept, we are only going to be getting one superiority dice. Now for the two maneuvers with our Martial Adept that we'll be getting, I would recommend taking Evasive Footwork and Disarming Attack. Evasive Footwork is pretty, pretty fucking nice for moving between a lot of enemies and not getting hit. And Disarming Attack, of course, because we can disarm an enemy. Why not? So once we reach our Rogue level of 11, we're going to be gaining our Reliable Talent. This is the main reason why we stuck with Rogue up until level 11. Reliable talent is absolutely amazing. Probably one of the greatest things within Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Once we've closed off our Rogue, we're going to go down here and we're going to add the Fighter class. So by the time we hit level 12, we are now a Rogue 11 and Fighter 1. For our fighting style, of course, you're going to probably want to take Archery. 
And with that out of the way, and we're leveling up some more, we're going to take the fighter all the way up to level 8. For our martial archetype, we are going to be taking the gunslinger. Uh, of course, if this is a recommendation, if you haven't been able to work it out with your DM, with being the lone gunsman or whatever, or there's no guns allowed in this campaign, I'd recommend maybe going with Arcane Archer. may not fit, fit as thematically, but it will still give you that edge that... No, it'll be alright. And it's not going to be as cool, but it'll be alright. Now, as for our trick shots, we get two options at third level. We are going to be choosing a dead eye shot. This will give us advantage whenever we want with our grip point. And we are also going to be choosing the winging shot. Um, I like the winging shot personally just because um, by this level we are 14. We're probably dealing with flying creatures long before this point, but uh, this helps out quite a bit. Once we get to our fourth level of fighter, the ASI that we're going to choose is a feat and lucky. This is probably going to be mostly used on re-rolling uh, misfires that you're going to be getting, and um, it's a very, it's just an amazing feat to have. Now, once we reach our sixth level ASI, we are going to be choosing another feat. We are, in fact, going to be choosing athlete for this level. This will give us our dexterity point that we needed to get all the way up to 20, and it's just going to overall help us out quite a bit. After 6th level, we're going to come up to 7th. As for the trick shot that I would recommend that you take, um, Dazing Shot is a pretty amazing one to have. It's going to be able to give a disadvantage to whatever you're hitting. As for our 8th level Fighter Feet, we're going to come down here, and we're going to choose Actor. This is going to give us that plus 1 to Charisma, possibly bumping us up from a 15 to a 16, 17 to an 18. You get the, get the idea of it. With Fighter 8 out of the way, we're going to close it off. We're going to come back over to our Rogue and bump the last level into that, giving us one last ASI. For this ASI, I went ahead and chose the Alert feat. Um, a plus 5 to our initiative is really amazing, especially stacking with our Gunslinger ability for having um, your proficiency bonus into your initiative bonus. So, with that leveling guide out of the way, let's go ahead over here and see what we got. So, as you can tell, this character, his passive perception is at a 30, which is a fucking huge amount. Um, his passive investigation, 32, and his passive insight, 25. Um, this, um, you're going to have to talk to your DM and see if this actually does come into play, because with this, you're going to be walking into rooms and discovering secrets left and right of you. So with this build too, we can see that I managed to get my dexterity up to a plus 5 and my intelligence up to a plus 5, adding into our skills. Um, the charisma ended up with a plus 4, which isn't too bad. Um, the wisdom, you want to keep wisdom somewhat higher as well because this will be able to give you better insight checks. Um, insight, I felt, was very important for a Sherlock detective type figure. He wants to be able to deduce if people are lying. And as you can tell, the craziest thing of all here is our initiative plus 16. You're going first in combat most of the time, unless you roll like maybe a 1. So that's insane. And so with that, I'm not going to go too into detail with all of the abilities that this character has. If there's for some reason a request for that, um, I'll make a video on it. But uh, this is very much a character that's um, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to play with. Um, of course, again, I would recommend that you don't take exactly from Sherlock and you don't plop him into your D&D universe. Create a character of your own. Create someone that's unique that you can claim as your own. This is just a play style, something that's like Sherlock. And again, there was an option instead of going down the Fighter 8 path, we could have went Monk 8. Um, I tried to squeeze Monk in here just because I felt like he was very adept at hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, but this is um, this is one of those characters where he's he's too fucking good at everything, and I couldn't I couldn't sacrifice um, the Fighter Eight and lose out on a lot of different fighter abilities or the Rogue Twelve. It's it's one of the characters where you're gonna have to make a choice. I felt with uh, with either being proficient with hand-to-hand -hand combat or with ranged melee weapons just too good at everything he does 
So with those closing remarks, I don't really have anything else to say besides thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that this maybe gives you some ideas on a character that you can play in a detective setting. It'd be very fun. Take it easy. Bye-bye.